Murr is coming in. What's All up, right. Murr? Guys? Hello, sir. Hey. How you doing, From uh, Impractical Jokers, of course. What's going on, man? What's up, bud? Good How are you? Guys. I'm great. How are you guys? Good. So, uh, we were talking, you know, uh, a lot of us here watch the show pretty regularly. Yeah. And uh, we were talking about how this book has been something that you've been teased about on the show uh, for not having it come out That's dude, you for know, a long time. Yeah, absolutely. They, they, they've... How do I put this on? What do I do here? Do so the big right? circle yeah. things so go on your the ears. Yeah, there it is. <laughs> but I hear nothing. There's nothing in it. Oh, you you turn the volume, the volume up. Okay. Yeah, there you, there you go. go. No, no, that no, was the now volume's not on you. We should have, we should have had that for you. There you go. So, uh, so yeah, they've been teasing me for years about mm -hmm. this book. You know, you've seen it. They, they, you know that I've not published. The story of it is this: because you've been trying to do it since college. Yeah, well, I wrote the book f almost 15 years ago. Okay, I Jesus. spent a year of my life writing, but I got, a, I got a degree in English. I can write a book, you know? Right. So I spent a year writing it, but the guys and I, you know the story of us. We're regular guys. We have no no nothing. We didn't know anybody. We had no cousin in the business. We just worked hard, right? So you, so you can write a book, yeah. but you can't publish the can't goddamn get it published. thing. Yeah. No, and like 14 years ago, there was self-publishing. <clears throat> right. It wasn't what it is today, you know? So, uh, so I sent it out to every publisher, and it got returned to me unopened. Unopened. They Why unopened? Because they, I didn't have an agent to represent oh. me, so they wouldn't even, wouldn't even consider it. So it's unsolicited. It. Unsolicited submission. Right. Oh. Which, which was my, my nickname in, in college. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder if that's a lawsuit thing, because I don't take shit when people send it, because then all of a sudden, if you do something that reminds right. them, they sue you. It's, it's like a fucking, it's yeah. a weird position for people now, to be in. Did that make you feel better that your rejections were coming back sealed? Meaning they hadn't actually rejected the material. Right, it was you no. as a human. Yeah. It was, yeah. yeah. They said no it, it was your name. It made me feel worse. It made me feel okay. like I had no ability to even get to the decision, you know what I mean? Like, right. It made me realize how far I was from the the, go the goal, right. you know? And uh, and then honestly, I got like a hundred, like just returns, and I just put it in my computer, and it sat there for a decade and a half. <laughs> so so when I get when I get crap from the guys, uh -huh. they've never except for Q, they've never read the book, right? You know, if it's any good, and and it's not, I never got rejected. They just you know, I right. had no agent. What did no Q nothing. say about it? Q loved it. Oh, okay. Q but the rest of them did not support you, did not read the book? Well, Joe, 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 in typical Joe fashion, Joe's like, uh, I sent him the book. I was like, but I could really use your help here. You know, what do you think? Is it good? You know? And he goes, well, okay, I read it. I was like, oh, what do you think? He goes, well, I didn't care for the middle. I was like, all right, well, that's, that's good feedback. Well, what, what about the middle? What, what didn't work? He goes, the, the very middle. I was like, okay, but specifically what very middle? He goes, the middle word. I was like, the middle word? He goes, yeah, I, I didn't think you needed the middle word. You could take it out. I said, well, wh what was the middle word? He goes, extraneous. I said, you think the word extraneous was extraneous? He goes, yeah. I was like, ah, oh, yes, son of a... He never read he it. He didn't read it. He didn't read no, it. No, he didn't he read the book. He not a single word of the book. No. And, Sal, and Sal's not interested? Sal's not interested in me in general. I so. see. I see. <laughs> yeah. I see. How, do you, uh, how do you maintain? Because, like, you know, we come from radio where we've watched partnerships dissolve like success for something for some reason in radio yeah for the most part success completely destroys partnerships it right? can yeah i mean me and anthony were really hard to work with yeah <laughs> <laughs> but how do how do you guys like you just said sal is not interested in you whatsoever yeah. <laughs> so how do you guys like stop yourselves from being at each other's throats and been like look this is a real good thing. The four of us have got to stick together on this. I feel this. like I've just been pine, pining for Sal's attention for 28 years now. <laughs> like, no, 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 you know, I think what's different about us is, you know, guys know our story. We've been friends since 1990. Mm -hmm. We went to an all-boys uh, school in high, uh, in high school in Staten Island. That bonds you for life, sure. you know? Right. And I think at this point, we're just too old to make new friends. Were you guys, <laughs> do you guys ever fight? Yeah, I mean, constantly. You do? Constantly. Yeah. Like, so, and like, sometimes, huge blowouts where we don't speak for a week, you know? Like, it's happening. Things that threaten to like actually fuck fuck up the the uh, no I think I think no I don't think so I think uh, cooler heads always prevail you know and we realize that um, what we're creating together is we're still having a, so much fun yeah right you know and it's opened up these avenues like you can actually get this book published yeah. you got a movie coming out now you got the the, yeah. the cruise that you do like yeah. it's it's kind of amazing that the show has been so successful that you guys and the people around you have been able to figure out how to. Get branch this thing out to every possible. You're smart. Avenue. Do it, man. You're very yeah. smart to do it. Uh, you know the cool thing too is that you, you when when something gets you down or you get pissed off, 
you remember that the, there are three other guys that are depending on you for different things, and that that kind of normalizes you too. You know, no no one of us gets out of control or has too big of an ego because your other three best friends just kind of rip rip you right down and right. keep you normal. That's why the guys and I've never like all of this stuff going on in our lives hasn't really changed the, our relationship right. or our personalities. It's yeah. weird when you're doing gigs though too because you guys do like they do big live gigs, but you're also depending on three other people to not get sick. Like it's like you got three other yeah, people yeah. to hope everybody shows up on time. Yeah, and uh, you guys are all pretty good at being there on time and being, being <laughs> because for a gig like there's like, in a band, you don't have always, like the one coke head that's the lead uh, singer showing up at the last minute. Yeah, and... no, I mean, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sal, Sal and Q live in Staten Island, still, yeah, you know, so they have to deal with the. The, the goddamn BQE every day, you know, to come to set. So that 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 causes a little bit of a, a chaos in, in in us filming the show. But no, I think we're pretty responsible all the time. And the thing is, too, in the TV show, we created a TV show, unfortunately, where all four of us have to be on camera at the same time. Right. There's, there's, there's no like you show up for your scene. Right. And an hour yeah. or two later, my call time is this. Sure. Our call time is the same, and our rap time is the same every single day. How much so. writing goes into it? Because it, it feels like you guys obviously write the pranks. Right, and then kind of make it up as you go once you get there, or is yeah. that kind of just the design? Everything's pretty much written. We we come up with the challenge ideas, right? And we have a team of uh, our basically our, our best friends that help us and pitch ideas to us. We uh, come up with the challenge ideas, then we put together like a bunch of jokes, ideas of what could happen, mm -hmm. um, uh, things that we want to try, and we keep those packets from each other. You know what I mean? So so Sal doesn't know what I'm going to give him, or Joe doesn't know what I'm going, you know, so on and so forth. Sure. And uh, and then honestly, we throw half of it out the window. And yeah, I'd say it probably get eighty percent of it is just improvised and in the moment. What how, do you feel? How hard does it get to the more famous you guys get, people recognize you? It happens, but you know, it's New York City. You know, there's ten million people here. It's not that hard, right? The movie was harder. We, you know, we just finished shooting the Joker's movie about a week ago. That was harder because we were is a travel movie, so we're hitting a lot of towns up and down the East Coast. Okay. Small towns, the word spreads, people start showing up. Mm, right. That was harder to do. Yeah, and I would imagine too, like you used to do everything at the Palisades Mall. Yeah, no. But we, I would imagine we, you can't really go to the Palisades no joke, anymore. We switch malls every season for that exact reason. Yeah. People start just showing up. You know, like, <laughs> you're not going to Banana Republic. You want to see us. You know? yeah. yeah. So is the movie, explain that, is, is the movie like a long episode? Is it? It's it's bigger than that. It's, it's a, it's a, uh, like a cross country uh, up and down the east coast <laughs> you know it's a uh, is, is it up and down the east coast road trip movie mm -hmm. uh, it is like impractical jokers in that there's hidden camera challenges throughout but there's a narrative beginning and end that gets sets us on this journey like borat in a way where yes, there's something yes. happening but there's a reason to be moving yeah exactly right it's got uh, lots of i will say uh, this is not hyperbole. This is <laughs> coming from my heart. I, I've never been more embarrassed in my life than one specific thing they did to me in the movie. It, 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 in eight se eight years of filming the TV show, what they did... Oh, by the way, Danica McKellar was just down the hall. I did like a thing with it. <laughs> and, and, and I was re re reliving that anxiety when I so had to pose in front of her naked. Danica McKellar played uh, Winnie Cooper on The on, Wonder on Years. The Wonder years you know? Murr's crush. <clears throat> and on one episode... So like the way, I don't know, the way the episodes work is that Throughout the episode, the guys do challenges. One guy ends up losing, so he ends up having to do the humiliation sure. at the end of the episode. Yeah. So for Murr on one episode, <laughs> they told him the big humiliation is you're going to have to be in a body bodybuilding competition. Yeah. And he's like, oh, no. They grease me up. Put yeah. a little, little Speedo on me. Mm. You know, I have the kind of body I shouldn't be naked in the shower. I just look weird. You know? Right. So, <laughs> so he's all greased up. He's got a, a red, white, and blue Speedo on. And then they push him in a room, and he finds out it's not a bodybuilding competition. He's there for Danica McKellar's press day. <laughs> yeah. and he's got to interview Danica yeah. McKellar. She's gorgeous in a dress and gown. I'm naked. My nipples are pointy. That's you know? very funny. And, <laughs> and then they just hand him the questions, like the yeah. index cards. It was. And it he's got to do this interview with her. So if you can imagine what they did to me in one particular moment in the movie was about 100 times more embarrassing oh, than that's that. Really? Oh, my God. It, it, I can't, I can't tell you too much about it, except I will give you a little tease, and this yeah. is the tease. I didn't real, I didn't even know they were filming the movie. We were done shooting that day, and so it was my regular life, mm -hmm. and it was something that it did to me my regular life <laughs> was actually part of the movie. So, Well, there was another one. I mean, wasn't it you that you thought you were on your way to get your dad or something like that, or, uh, or, or on your way to set, and they ended up driving him onto one of those boats that takes cars? <laughs> and so he ended up just in his car on a boat, and he's like, what the fuck is going yeah, on? Yeah. And that's when they dropped the bomb on him that this is actually a challenge, and we're gonna put you on a little, like, 
dinghy thing yeah. right next to the Statue of Liberty. Dressed as a Statue of Liberty. And you have to dress up like a Statue of <laughs> Liberty and wave stupid, to all the tourists. All these stupid cruise boats are going by. And, and none of the people on the boats are looking at the Statue of Liberty. They're looking at the idiot standing <laughs> in the Statue of Liberty in the middle of the water on a dinghy with no boats around. You right. guys have a good, whoever goes to your behind the scenes like location stuff does a good job getting you guys access to stuff. Because if you do, like, if you ask the New York City, oh my hey, God. I want to sit in the water while boats go by, <laughs> yeah. like, you got to have a good locations person who handles that. Yeah. Dude, I couldn't believe. The one that they showed, because I mean, the, the show's on constantly on yeah. True TV. It's amazing. But I turned it on last night, and it was the episode where one of the guys, they put him, you know, the tram that goes from like Roosevelt oh, Island? Yeah, yeah. So they put one of the guys, they strapped him to the roof of the tram, and then they stopped the tram halfway. So it's our swinging, you know? And, and, oh, fuck and that. they just made it swing and blah, blah, blah. But I couldn't believe that you guys got that kind of access to the trams yeah. and that, that you stopped them. How and the then... fuck do you get them to let you... Although they filmed stuff up there. Night Nighthawks, I think it was yeah. called, was filmed up there with Stallone. So maybe they've done use that it for films It is privately before. owned. That's how. Oh. Really? No joke. It's not part of the MTA. It's a privately owned there company that does it. That's how you get it. But we made Joe dress as Captain... We called him Captain Fatbelly because he's got a huge gut, right? We put him in this like, ridiculous costume like with a cape and everything. And, and as other trams are going... You know, the trams are still moving sure. the other way, right? As the trams are going by... <laughs> He, he, he's there, he's going, he's sitting on the roof, right? He's going, suck it. You know, he's like, hey, New Jersey, suck it. Hey, yeah. Queens, suck it. He's just turning around. He's and standing? Him, yeah, he's standing on he's, the roof. He's the... like strapped to it. Yeah. But he's still like, <clears throat> you can see the minute he takes his hands off the thing to crotch chop, he's like going to fall down. And he's like, <laughs> crotch chop. Get me the fuck out of here. Yeah. <laughs> That's horrifying. It's yeah. horrifying. It's horrifying. I was looking at that going like, no. You wouldn't do it? I could never. <laughs> I don't even like being, I've done the tram a couple of times. I don't like it. It but, frightens me. But they made you skydive, right? Yeah, they, they threw me out of a plane. I <laughs> yeah, skydived. Yeah, and I cry-dived. <laughs> so, yeah. How high? Uh, 14,000 feet? Yeah, but they didn't. you didn't know you were skydiving. No, I, 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 the, the crazy part about it was I, I called my mother. Right before I before I did it, I was, I was in tears. Right, I called my mom and she sent me to voicemail because she was at Macy's shopping. I was like, "Come on, mom, it's my die, my, my my die." She's like, "At Macy's, can't talk." <laughs> Is there anything that they've done to you that? Uh... Has gotten you pissed? Well, I mean, they had a friend of mine give me two prostate exams. That was right. something. Right. They, they had this dog, they, you know, pushed me into a room, the same room, coincidentally, that I did the Danica McKellar punishment in. They pushed me into a room. There's a uh, room full of 100 guys. Doctor up there talking about men's health. I was like, oh, I see where this is going. <laughs> and they said, Merle, all you have to do is ask, is volunteer when he asks for a volunteer. And the doctor says, you know, it's important as you get older to get a prostate exam. I'm like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> so I volunteer. And the doctor, what you don't know when you're at home watching on TV, is that that doctor is not no regular doctor. He is a buddy of mine for the past 15 years right. who happens to be a doctor. So they had a friend of mine <laughs> give me two prostate exams on TV. <laughs> yeah, that was pushing it. You I wouldn't want to do that. I don't know if I would or not to have Colin's dumb fingers in my ass or, <laughs> or stupid Bob. Because um, cause on some level, you would know that like this is hilarious television. But on another level, you're like, I don't want that guy's fingers in my asshole right now. <laughs> but in another thing, on, and the third thing is, now my dumb friend has to finger my ass, and I know he hates it, too. <laughs> like, like, Get in there. That will forever bond you. Like, we, him and his wife and I, we still go out to dinner, and, and I'm like, his fingers have been in my ass. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Did you push back a little? I would have fucked with him. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh. Oh, my God. Just make noises the whole time. <laughs> By the way, what is your book about? <laughs> the book is, uh, so it's called Awakened. Uh, as I said, I wrote it 14 years ago. The idea is this. In the near future, New York City builds uh, a new extension of the Z train in downtown. And they connect, uh, finally connect Staten Island with the, the subway system and all the boroughs. Underneath the East River, they build this underwater visitor's pavilion, like glass, steel, super high tech. The inaugural run of the train when the train rolls into the pavilion, on the train is the mayor's wife and like 100 lucky New Yorkers that won the lottery. They get to ride the Z train for the first time, the new one. When the train rolls into the pavilion underwater, all the passengers are missing, the cars are covered in blood, and the windows are shattered outward. So this is a great mystery. What happened in that subway tunnel? And what you come to realize, the mayor's, of course, is in panic. His wife was on the train. All the passengers still alive. What's going on? And what you come to realize is that what's happening underneath New York City is far far more terrifying than anything you can ever imagine. So when you have something like this that you're sitting on, right? You're yeah. like, I want, this is my work. This yeah. is what I want the world to see. And instead it's like, oh yeah, I remember when uh, you had to sneak a person's french fries off yeah, their plate yeah, and yeah. eat them. Yeah. Are you going like, yeah, no, I, 
I do more than just steal people's French fries <laughs> sure. on TV. Well, you guys know. I mean, creativity is creativity. There's no, sure. there's right. no limit to what you can right. create. And I've always loved horror. I'm a huge horror fan. And I used to love the TV show uh, 24. You know, mm-hmm. oh my God, like this, this book reads like the very best 12 episodes of 24, you know, not the BS episodes. By the way, what nobody on the radio can see <laughs> oh my God, I was... is Travis's fucking in holding a pen. It's a great show. <laughs> I know, but it was your, it was your nod of agreement. Yes. Murr, I'm with you. <laughs> yeah. 24. It, his non-ironic nod of agreement. Great like, show. Damn great it. actor. Yeah. Travis has a big... Keith or Sutherland fetish. Me too. Yeah, I'm with yeah, you. I'm with you, bud. But so the minute you, the minute you go, smart. like we, you know, we know 24. It's a great show. Travis goes, it is, Mur. Yes, it is. <laughs> now I'm interested in the book. <laughs> it was <laughs> uh, holding that pen and nodding in a self-satisfied <laughs> way, like yeah. Did you a couple so, of gentlemen like, of similar ilk? Yeah. Did you like the TV show Fringe? Yeah, I love Fox. Fringe. Fringe See, is great. It, it, it's like Fringe meets 24. I'll, I'll it's that it. kind of pace. I'm going to read it. What do you guys do? You did Madison Square Garden, right? We played, We sold out Madison Square Garden. That's wow. incredible. Remember, I got a tattoo on my ankle. I got an ankle tattoo. This is MSG and the date of it. Wow. So, Because we did, you, uh, you know, 10 years ago, 12 years ago, we did a show in Manhattan. No joke, two people bought tickets to see us perform. Two people. They were two students of mine at the time. They spent five bucks each on tickets. We it cost us $65 to rent the theater. So we lost $55. <laughs> we split the $55 four ways. And then, so, you know, I mean, as a performer to go to that, to Madison Square Garden. And we remember that night 12 years ago. What yeah. do you do on the yeah. on the live show? Like, what it's what like, is a Madison Square Garden and Practical Joker show it's entail? The, it's a stand-up comedy show. The four of us on sure. stage, a mm-hmm. giant screen behind us where we shot hidden camera challenges you can only see on the, in the live the show. Live show mm-hmm. yep. It's basically, honestly, it's a lot of uh, them just ripping on me, <laughs> ripping on each other, you know, and everything you love about the TV show. Do you That's guys great. do individual stand-up? Uh, Sal does. Sal does okay. solo stand-up as well. Uh, we all kind of like have a different interest. Q's the best writer out of us. He's doing a graphic novel right now. Mm-hmm. Sal does solo stand-up as well as, of course, our collective stand-up. Uh, Joe does a huge anti-bullying campaign and pet adoption, does a lot, of, a lot of work with charity, and he basically produces Practical Jokers. And then my interests are things like this. I, I love the, the book. This is a trilogy, by the way. It's going to be a new book every every year. That's fabulous. So, Do you have the other two written? I'm um, writing two now. We we have two and three sketched out entirely. Okay. And chapter breakdowns. Now we just got to write the damn thing. What's the conversation like with True TV when you when you start out? It's like True TV is this little network. You're a little show. Like they probably throw a little bit of money at you, and it's like, yeah, go have fun, guys. When you get to the point after a few seasons where you're like, okay, guys, we're the network now. <laughs> yeah. It, is there is there a is there a cash in conversation where you're like, it's time. For you guys to either name the network after us yeah. because or, we're the whole thing. We want more money, <laughs> or, or, or you got to give us a ton of money. Well, you know, I, they, they've been great partners. I will say that they're yeah. awesome. And and, and to the when I, when I pitched the show, right? Like my job outside of Jokers, I used to run development for the past twelve years for a TV company, right? So when I went out to pitch the show. Uh, to their credit, they, we had like two different networks competing for the show, right? And um, MTV and True TV. And uh, to their credit, they said to us years ago, "If you come, with, if you go with us, we'll make you guys the face of the network." And they are, were true to their yeah. word, man. No, like no joke. Yeah. Like, what a we, smart move to go with MTV. That's a brave move too, to very go with True move. TV and not MTV. Well, the crazy yeah. thing was, MTV wanted the show, but not us. They wanted they wanted to recast it with the younger kids, whatever, Ugh. and make it like a five day a week a game show. Ugh. Which, they but, s- Dink. So stupid. But, but the thing is, when you, when you sell, a, that's called like a strip show. They call it five days a week, right? When you sell a, a, sh- a show five days a week like that, that's big money. If you if in success, oh. like who wants to be a millionaire or something? Right, when you're right, producing right. It five days a week, you crank them out, and as a producer, you can make a lot of money. It's like the the, the holy grail of game shows right. to sell. So for and we all had real jobs, right? Q was a fireman. Uh, Joe uh, Sal owned a bar. Joe was a salesman. I worked in TV development. So it was a real debate. Like, do we just sell this to them? And keep our lives. And get ma- that producer and, and just money. just get the check coming in. But it might not last for long anyway. It might correct. be one season and done. Exactly. Right. And, and it's not the, something like you can't... It's a little bit more difficult to jump off of that success because your faces aren't on it. Exactly right. right. And so now... And we took the gamble and... Uh, I mean, I mean, thank God. <laughs> great, great move, man. That's so smart. To, and it's brave to go with them just because MTV was, is MTV. Yeah. And they made like fucking the Jersey Shore. And they make all these, you know... Yeah. yeah. It really is funny the way some shows like that work because... You know, you worry about overexposure. Yeah. But, like, there's a, a real small handful of shows. Your show's one of them. I think Shark Tank's one of them. That, like, you turn on the channel and you expect it to be on. Yeah. And when it's any show, like, when you turn on True TV and it's not Impractical Jokers, you're like, what the fuck yeah. are they doing? <laughs> yeah. Why is they something else on? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Why is there another show on? <laughs> uh, let's go to some calls. Chris in Rochester. What's up, pal? Hey, how you guys doing? Hello. 
Uh, James S. Murray, how you doing today, buddy? Good, bud. How are you, man? Uh, great. Listen, I'm a, I'm a loyal uh, Jim and Sam fan, but uh, I'm also a diehard uh, Impractical Jokers fan. My son is 10 years old. Uh, he has autism. Uh, friends are not a very common thing for him. Uh, he, he finds comedy to be kind of a good outlet. And he, he's not a big slapstick comedy fan, but he's too young for me to, you know, put him in front of a Jim Norton special and let him watch that kind of stuff. <laughs> I know. Well, that's all you need is the boy laughing. <laughs> uh, no doubt. I, well, I bought a Monster Rain for his ninth birthday. But can't read that, but. Yeah, it's about time. It was too childish and poorly um, written for him. <laughs> uh, no doubt. But what's great about IJ is it's such a great in between. Uh, you get a little bit of a slapstick, and some of the stuff's inappropriate. I know you guys are coming here in Rochester uh, in November, and I can't take it because he's only 10. But I just want to let you know, man, like, you guys have really provided him with just an outlet where. He, he has a commonality, especially when you can go on the internet, YouTube videos, with other kids that are like him that find your show interesting. And uh, we just bought your book yesterday. Oh, thanks, and man. I'm, uh, and, you know, I, I know you're doing the thing where you're sending the videos to people. Yeah. And uh, so I, I sent an email last night. It was a little uh, wordy. And just, <laughs> just talking about, you know, I'm trying to get emotional. You guys have really helped my son Ryan out a lot. Um, not with his social development, but just helping him feel like a normal kid at times. And, uh, I'm trying not to cry, but you guys' show, it's so stupid. It's just a comedy show, but it really, it provides him something that, that makes him feel normal for a little bit. Right, so that, that, that means I, a lot to I, me. I appreciate what you guys do, man. That means uh, a lot to me. I, I, I'll tell you, you know, when we, when we created the show, we had no, we thought we were just being screw-ups. We were like, you know, a couple of middle-aged guys, and we were creating like a prank show. We had no clue that it would become like a family show, that like the, the grandparents watch, the kid, the parents yeah. watch, the teenagers watch, and it's like the show they all agree on. So I, I don't take that lightly. Like, it means a lot to me that you say that. And, um, and I know that you bought the book because you believe in the guys and I, you believe that we're good guys and that you want to support us, you know our story. Story, and that means a lot to me too. And um, I, I, I will get to that video. The video he's talking about is that if you buy a book and send me the proof of purchase. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah too. I'm not taking your word for it. Yeah, you send a proof of purchase to awakensnovel at gmail.com. I then, then will send you a video of your choosing. You, I'll say basically the gist of what you want, whatever you want me to oh, say. Oh boy, are you going to regret that? Yeah. <laughs> Ready? I did 600 Father's Day mess videos last weekend. 600. And then so anything, wow. birthdays, anniversaries. How long is each one? Uh, like 30 seconds a minute. I, I, I'm improvising. And, I and you said before too, you're also okay with uh, anti-Semitic stuff, homophobic yeah, stuff. You'll say anything. He any of that. prefers it. Right, <laughs> right. Just to spice it up a little. the same person. <laughs> <laughs> You've also, uh, the Impractical Jokers tour that's going on right now winds up or, or ends up this weekend, right? Uh, the, the Santiago Centers tour ends this weekend, Sunday. And then the... the That's Cringe in Virginia and North Carolina. Yeah, yeah. And then uh, in August, beginning of August, we start the new tour. Uh, <laughs> the Cringest McBasketball World Tour. <laughs> we do this bit on the show where uh, we, you know, we're you in a waiting room and you have, to, you have to call out fake names of people that aren't in the waiting right. room. So, such as Cringest McBasketball <laughs> or Dr. Shrimp Puerto Rico. You know, <laughs> or, or, or this fat bitch. <laughs> yeah, is there a this fat bitch here? Yeah.